Um, yeah, my name is Siegfried Göschel. I'm currently working as a contractor at Wilhaben AT. You know those web thingy platform for classified ads. And may I also introduce Harald. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay. Uh, yes, I'm uh, Harald Kuhl. Uh, I'm from Norway, working for a Norwegian consulting company called uh, Bouvé. Yeah, and I've been a Java developer for around 17 years. So, uh, yeah. That's me. Okay. So I hope everyone is fit and up and running now to get, get this presentation. So this presentation starts with a question. The question at hand is, what is the perfect morning for a consultant? The perfect morning for a consultant is a question from a customer saying, how difficult is it to replace image magic with a Java library? It's a perfect start for a consultant because that means a new contract. Me thinking, hmm, just doing a similar project for different customer. Well, you have Java, Java 2D API, you have Image IO, you have Java Advanced Imaging. It's just images, you know? No, that can't be difficult. So my answer was, no, that's not too difficult. Okay, a few words about my customer. I work for Wilhelm Mate. So when we talk images, we are talking about scaling, resizing, user uploaded images. To give you a few impressions, uh, on Markplots, we have two and a half million classified ads. Each ad comes usually with an average of two images. So we're talking about five to six million images resized every month. So that's about the advertisement spoiler. So what was the customer doing actually to process all of its images? The customer will have Mate uses image magic. Image magic is basically a very versatile command line tool. That means you have an image on the file system, you start the command line tool, and it does whatever it's going to do. So it basically does image conversion and scaling. Uh, image magic is a very nifty tool, so you can basically extend the functionality of image magic by plugins. One of those plugins is GhostScript. So you can use GhostScript to render a PDF. That means converting a PDF to a preview image. And yeah, interesting questions. It's a command line tool. So how to access a command line tool by a Java application? You basically have two ways of doing that. You start an external process, which has some advantages, but also some disadvantages. Or you're going through something called Java native interface. So you basically have a binding from your Java invocation to the native code. What was the problem the customer experienced? It's easy. You have this native code. And if the native code comes across an unexpected problem, it throws an exception. The really bad thing about GNI and native exception is that it kills your GVM. That means if image magic has a problem converting one single image, it kills your Java virtual machine. The good thing is, uh, in case that the user is unable to upload an image, we display an error message. Um, an error has occurred. Please try it again. And we have a load balancer. That means the user uploaded the first image, killed one server, then we display the error message, please try again. Then we have the load balancer directing the request to the next server, which brings down the next server as well. It's really good stuff. One thing is, those binding is basically, yeah, the, you have those binding between native code and Java code, and we use the library for that called JMagic, but JMagic is not longer maintained. So one problem we had is we were unable to basically pass certain parameters to ImageMagic, like JPEG quality parameters. And one problem which actually affected me heavily is setting up all those image magic, J magic, go script stuff on the box. Because I have a Mac and I feel miserable to set up to st uh, those things within two days. So for me, the whole stack of image matching, J magic, whatever, did never work. So I was really interested to replace that solution. Having said that, Image Magic and GhostScript are mature tools. They are out in production for many, many years, and they have many
many, many bug fixes in there. They handle a lot of image flavors and formats. And Will Haben was using this combination, this technology stack, actually for, I think, eight years in production, handling those five million images per month. So looking at those requirements, I thought, no, it's not so easy any longer. And yeah, that's the reason why we have this presentation, because I was right. It was not so easy any longer. The first thing, tackling a problem like this is, you know it, my favorite saying, wir brauchen einen Plan. So we need a plan. So how to tackle this problem? First, first thing was using Java Image.io to do this low-level plumbing of image processing. Maybe resort to those Java advanced imaging stuff in order to support additional formats like DIFF or JPEG 2000. Um, using an open source off-the-shelf library for image scaling. So basically you have to huge user uploaded image and you would like to generate five to six preview or thumbnail images, whatever. And for the PDF thing, I thought it's a good idea to revert to PDF box, Apache PDF box, which is able to basically to create preview images of, uh, of a PDF document. Image IO is actually basic stuff. Yeah? I mean, what can you do with an image IO library? You basically, you can load images using an image reader. The image reader supports various image formats like JPEG, PNG, whatever. On the other hand, when you have read the image, you are able to write it back to whatever you want, to the database, to the file system. For that, using a thing called image writer. And for the image writer, you can set parameters like JPEG quality or the dots per inch for the output. In between, between loading an image and writing an image, you can apply a couple of image operations. And those image operations, they have, yeah, sort of funny name. I mean, a color conversion, it's simple. As an example, it would be you have a, a color image you would like to translate to grayscale. Then there is a thing called affine, is it called affine transformation? Yeah, the pronunciation is important, affine transformation. That's a very fancy name for basically scaling. What an affine transformation is, you do something from the original image to a target image and you basically keep your parallel lines parallel in the output. If that is the case, that's an affine transformation. Another fancy word, convolution operation. Sounds convoluted to me and it's right, it's convoluted because what you're doing is you're doing some processing on one pixel and in order to do this processing on one pixel, you're looking at the neighborhood of this pixel. So you basically convolute this one pixel with those neighborhood pixels. Funny thing is this convolution operation is basically sharpening or softening. It's basically yeah, different operations but relying on the same principle. And there is one nifty, f there is one nifty feature of Java Image.io it has something called a service provider interface. That means you have your certain formats coming with Image.io and you can extend the formats by using those SPI approach. That means if you have additional libraries supporting additional image formats, they can, they can be loaded during runtime. And this is exactly the thing the Java advanced imaging library is providing. It's basically an extension. It implements those service provider interface and in our case, it adds TIFF support and JPEG 2000. Um, I had an interesting problem. I was using those Java advanced imaging stuff and it did not work. All those TIFF stuff was there, but it did not work with ImageIO properly. The reason, that's really important. Usually, any article in the internet just mentions two of those Java advanced imaging libraries, but there is a third one, and the third missing one was the ImageIO stuff, which actually triggers the integration into the ImageIO API. The bad thing about the Java advanced imaging is you don't find the libraries on Maven Central. And if you find download links, they're usually broken, and if you look for documentation, you usually find that documentation links. And I think last stable release was 2006. So in Java term, this is ancient code. And 
you might mention it has many unresolved bugs and there are many unofficial forks and yeah. So having a look at image scaling. Image scaling is simple. Uh, oh, oh sorry, I thought it's simple. So when you look through the internet, you find many different methods how you could rescale an image, like get scaled in the instance, buffered image ops, affine transforms. So I decided, okay, that looks really difficult. So I would like to stick to an open source, off-the-shelf library doing image scaling. So what we did for this project, we evaluated three of them. It's image scaler, it's thumbnailator, it's Java image scaling. And the good news are, they are basically the same. They have the same performance, they're basically delivering the same result with the same speed. So you can pick one if you like. Image scaling is also about quality. So just think about it. Your problem is scaling 5,000 million images. So you have speed, you need speed, it should be efficient. On the other hand, yeah, you expect a certain image quality of a resized image of a thumbnail preview. And when you talk about image quality, it's a lot about the algorithms being used. So there are simple ones, there are more complicated ones. The more complicated ones take more time. Um, you might do some image preprocessing, like sharpening, anti-aliasing. You might do some autocorrection of images. If it's underexposed, that you spread the exposure within the image. And one important thing is the JPEG quality settings, assuming that you're writing JPEGs. So if your image quality is too low, you get a very small output file, but it looks ugly. So Harald. Right. Yeah, just when you thought um, Java and everything with Java 2D was really stable, then Java 8 comes along, and um, it brings along one really important um, important change in the um, Java 2D libraries. That is, they actually changed the entire color management system from the old Kodak color management system that was used um, all the time since Java 1.2, I think. And now suddenly it's replaced with little CMS, which is actually a good thing because it has an open source and very well maintained uh, color management system. But it does affect some things about Java image uh, image processing, and that is um, the um, ICC or International Color Consortium uh, profile handling. Is now um, yeah colors might look different because of this, and also color convert operations may be a little slower because of this, and this is not so good. So um, the good news is that you can get the old CMS back, and um, I suggest you do this for now. If you want to do an image processing with Java, it actually just um, use this little switch down there to uh, get the old functionality back. Cool. Okay tackling the last part of the plan. We have those PDF documents. So the task at hand is to create a preview image of a PDF document. Preview image means you somehow have to render the PDF document to get the first page to display a preview image. Doing that, I'm using Apache PDF, PDF box, and it's actually quite a versatile tool. So if you're really interested in that, you could extract the text found within PDF file you could extract using PDF box. You can merge and split PDF image uh, documents, and it has one command line tool doing a PDF to image conversion. And this is actually the thing we are using. We're doing a PDF to image conversion, just take the first image as a preview image. And the really good thing is uh, PDF box uses plain vanilla Java image IO API under the hood. Extracting an image looks like this. You pass a PDF document, you load it, and then you're basically iterating over each PDF page, and you invoke a method called convert to image. This is it. That means the whole task of converting a PDF document containing multiple pages could be done in 10 lines of code. Yeah. Looks good until now, but now, 
the first problem occurs. It's called, uh, let me think, it's called quality assurance. So I had my code ready, it worked, I passed my personal test, and now we had this quality assurance department. We are throwing at it more and more fancy images. So, yeah, and I'm describing now the problems I had with my quality assurance department. And it's a little bit of a puzzle game. So I ask you what's wrong with my pictures, and if you guess it, you get a sweetie. Okay, so what's wrong with the picture? Apart from, this is red. How could that happen? So what I was doing here was converting a PNG to a JPEG. Something went wrong for this PNG. Any ideas? Uh, first thing, color model, yes. That's 50% right. Other ideas? Alpha channels, that's a good one. I'm very bad at throwing, so please. <laughs> that's correct. We have a problem with alpha channels. I mean, alpha channel is something very simple. It basically says, oh, you have this pixel. This pixel might have a color, but it also might have a transparency. And yeah, if transparency is 100%, you don't see the thing. And what happens in the background is, image IO uses an you have to uh, RGBA color model. No, that's fine. I'm, I can handle that. Eh? That means you have this red, green, blue, and you have this alpha channel thing. And when image IO saves the image, the JPEG has those RGBA. And this is something which confuses most other tools, uh, most other image viewers out there, even the browsers. So according to the JPEG specification, it's correct. I mean, there were some questions in the internet about it, if it's really correct or not, but it's mostly correct. But most applications can't handle it. So the solution is, it's a very simple one. The solution is, on the internet, remove the alpha channel. Okay, how do you remove an alpha channel, just in case? You <laughs> I know it's easy, yeah? Okay, that's the sample for removing alpha channel. The problem is, I have problems, but he knows why I have those problems, yeah? So, next thing. What's wrong with that statement? Is it good? Is it not so good? Is it fatal? Okay. That's right. So when we look at the line, it's saying, okay, I would like, I would like to reject big, really big images. Really big images are a pain, they need a lot of memory. So we don't want to process really big images. But there is a misconception. The file size has nothing to do with the image size beneath. <laughs> and if you, if, if you actually rely on the file size, you're open to a thing called decompression bomb vulnerability. As an example, is I have a custom PNG file. This PNG file takes 44 kilobyte on the disk, but it has 19,000 multiplied 19,000 pixels and uses one gigabyte of main memory. So when you check for file size and image size, please take the image size, yeah? And retrieving the image size is really easy because you can just pass parts of the image metadata which is a one-liner and it's very efficient because it just passes the image headers. And a much better idea is don't upload huge files to your server. It would be much smarter if you resize the files, the images actually on the front end using HTML5 or an app. Okay, next puzzle. What's wrong? Okay, it's the stack trace what's wrong, but any ideas what could be wrong with this particular picture? Okay, it's an iPhone, yeah. Sorry about it. Nothing wrong with that. Hmm? It's a JPEG. It's an image. I can open it in preview. I can open it in any other application, but I can't process it. Any ideas what could be wrong with this particular picture? 
I get the sweet here. I know the solution. It's uh, a newer version of Chef? Nope. That comes later. No, there is a funny thing called Smook. Have you ever heard about Smook? It was my first time, you know. So what is Smook? Smook is basically like going back to kindergarten. Do you remember those watercolors? When you mix and match all those watercolors, you get those brown, darkish color. So that's basically what Smook is. It's a subtractive color model. Compared to the RGB color model, if you add all those colors, you get a beautiful white. Here, if you add all those colors, you get a black one. I mean, it's not bad, it's just a different way of doing things. The problem with those different way of doing things is that the plain image I Java image I.O. is not supporting SMIC images. Do you have any chance to get a SMIC image? Yes, unfortunately you have. Because it's used in color printing. It's actually the default color model for printing. And if it's for printing, it's used by Photoshop users. So if you have a graphic designer creating a beautiful image of an estate to be sold or an estate project, he or she might upload those SMIC images. And yeah, you can't convert it. So I searched for the internet and I found out it's not trivial. It sounds really complicated. And I found an article in Stack Overflow mentioning those strange library called 12 Monkeys. And yeah, that's the guy of 12 Monkeys. I contacted him, he solved my problem, and that's the reason why he's standing here. All right, 12 Monkeys, that's the reason why I'm here. And um, 12 Monkeys is my um, hobby project that I've been developing for a couple of years now. Um, it's all good ideas, it started uh, after a long night at the pub. We were a group of um, consultants and friends who want to start a new consultant company together. So we needed a name. The consultant company never happened, but the name stuck to the project. So that's why it's called 12 Monkeys. Initially, it was developed for a um, content management system. We had a rich um, Swing client. Um, it ran on ran on OS X, which for some reason has a very strange clipboard format that there is no support for in Java, so I had to write an um, image I.O. plugin for that. This is a picked image reader, and also a lot of our customers, of course, were working with Photoshop because this was printed press and media customers, so that's why I also wrote a PSD or Photoshop image reader or plugin for image I.O. And that was the start of the library, and um, after a while I started using it in various other projects as well. Um, especially for the online bookstore, where I also discovered the same SMIC JPEG problem that um, uh, Siegfried mentioned. And also along with this, there was a lot of other real-world JPEG problems, because JPEG isn't just JPEG, JPEG is so many different things. Like you can have SMIC color space, you can have different ICC color profiles in them, some of them are broken, some of them don't even match the data in the JPEG, so you have to kind of ignore it at runtime. Some of them are broken, so you have to patch the ICC profiles at runtime. Um, also, the JPEG stream can contain a lot of superfluous data, or it can be part of old translated data that contains like a thumbnail from a different image and stuff like this. So you end up with this problem with inconsistent JPEG metadata, which is, yeah, if you Google for that, you probably find like a hundred hits on Stack Overflow. Um, this is the kind of things that my library tries to deal with. Also, um, if any of you have ever tried to deploy image IO plugins as part of your web app, you will soon discover that the Java runtime will not discover your pl plugins. Um, and because of this, uh, you need to call this method an image I called scan for plugins. This will solve your problems, but now you have two problems, which is not good. And uh, that is, you now have a class loader issue that because of these um, plugins are now loaded by your web application class loader, you also have a resource leak. 
This will mean that after you redeployed your web application a couple of times, all of those plugins will be kept in memory forever, and uh, you'll run out of memory. For these, I <coughs> created a um, context listener, a web context listener. That will actually do dynamic loading and unloading of image IO plugins, which you can install into your web application like this. Kind of almost like a one liner, but it's XML, so it's 17. Okay, so why would you want to use Twelve Monkeys library in your project? Um, I think it is granted that you're working with images if you want to use this library. So, um, yeah, it uses a standard image IO library, or a standard image IO API, which is, yeah, it's a quite big API, so it takes some time to get used to it, but at least it's standard and you don't have to learn a lot of other APIs as well. It's an actively maintained project. I work on it at least weekly, so it's getting updated, and um, yeah, it has growing user base right now, which is good. Also, it has no native code, so it makes it a lot easier to install than maybe Image Magic or the Jai stuff that needs native code to work. Also, it has a very liberal open source license, BSD. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my plans forward, because I want to make Java support even more of the JPEG format like lossless JPEG, which some Austrian guy wanted to read. Uh, also, arithmetic coding, which is, um, I don't know if you know the JPEG spec very well. Um, anyway, normally all JPEGs are Huffman coded, which means it's a compression scheme. Um, but there's also support in JPEG for a superior algorithm called arithmetic coding, which was licensed some years ago, but now it's open, so now anyone can implement it, and we probably should. I also want to do SMIC write support into that, and um, yeah, hopefully someday I'll have camera raw plugins, which is what I'm working on right now, for Canon, Nikon, and the DNG format. And of course, improved TIFF support, which is useful. Sometimes. I think we'll come back to that later. Um, right now I have support for reading all baseline TIFFs, um, but it's still missing some very important facts and codings like the CCITT T4 and T6. It's mostly used in faxes. Also, I want to implement sorry, um, baseline write support plus most of the common extensions to TIFF, as well as metadata. Okay, so I have my, I'm back, so I have my image processing, rescaling stuff I implemented, it passed through quality assurance, so we put the stuff into production. Unfortunately, production is very harsh on your code. And I give you a few examples of production issues I had later on. So we are going back to those quiz thing. What's wrong with that image? Okay, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> okay, next try. What's wrong with this PDF? And you're not allowed to answer. The young lady. Yeah, that's correct. So my problem with that uh, PDF document is, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just huge. Okay. Uh, Java's response to being huge was that one. Oh yeah, it's it's you. Okay, yeah, segment violation. Cool. Did I tell you the story about those error message we have? A server error has occurred. Please retry again. And did I tell you that we have a load balancer behind it? So the user retried it three times, so brought down our three servers, or three of our ten servers. Okay, so what's the issue? That's a huge image. Okay, unfortunately, going back to those file size check, it has only 330 kilobytes of file size. And I think I found the solution of the real problem, I found the real problem, it has something to do with Apache PDF box implementation and my code. 
so we did not agree with each, each other. So I was basically, what went wrong is I took those huge image and I was accidentally enlarging it and that bumped the GVM. So I think, yeah, it's partly my issue, it's partly a PDF documentation issue, but be aware, if you're really handling large images, it might kill your GVM. So what we did is we built in a sanity check again, saying, okay, we have those PDF document, we extract the page, and within the page we're looking for an object image, and if the object image is really large, we just say, oh, sorry, that's too large, we don't want to process it. Next one, what's wrong with this particular picture? It's not a PDF document, it's a picture. And it's actually a hint. Yes, that's a good one. A little bit more detailed. Okay, it's the pages. A what? A GIF for graphic or? No, not really, but it's near. Okay, anyone else? It's a sweet here. Yeah? interesting properties, like it supports multiple pages. And this particular TIFF file has a multi-page TIFF with compression type 7, which means JPEG. Correct? Okay. And it's rather uncommon. So I had this TIFF file, I could open the TIFF file, that's not an issue, but the moment I would like to process it, I can't open it. And that's the reason why TIFF is sometimes called thousands of incompatible file formats. Okay, I was, I was consulting Wikipedia, so the real name for this file format is TECT, how's it called? TECT image file format. Okay, that's much harder to remember. Why it's TECT? Because, you know, you have different types of images, how to store them, how to compress them, you can add metadata, and this is all described by so-called text. Therefore, it's called text data file, uh, uh, text image file format. So you basically can mix and match between multiple representation of an image and compression formats and storage. So you have an explosion of possible combinations. That means there are so many different combinations out there, you can't handle them all. That's the problem. Now we have a file format, which is 100% versatile, but you can't handle it. What do we do? Well, we make a big meeting. We say, well, we have this huge TIFF thingy where you can do all the things you would like to do in currently and in the future. But we say, well, we provide, we, we define a minimal subset. It's called baseline TIFF. So the baseline TIFF is a minimal subset of TIFF files you can process. The problem is that baseline TIFF is not enough. So there is a thing from a company called Adobe, which says, well, we have those extension things, and it's called TIFF 6.0 part 2 TIFF extension, which is commonly used out in the wild. So what is the baseline TIFF, actually? It's multi-page support. It's, oh, you should explain that. Sorry. Switching over. <laughs> okay, yeah. Baseline TIFF. Um, that's really the most basic TIFF functionality. Uh, nothing is uh, licensed or no technology is licensed in there. So you can implement it without infringing licenses. And um, yeah, it supports multi page uh, strips or tiles. That means you can either lay out your images in like strips or multiple pixels or you can have them as tiles which makes um, yeah if you're reading only a part of the image it would make it easier to um, access the pixels. Uh, it also contains uh, the most basic image types like your bi-level grayscale indexed color and RGB color models. It does not con contain SMIC 
compression schemes, uh, all the uncompressed ones, the group 3 encoding that no one uses, and pack bits, which is an old Macintosh compression format that also no one uses. Uh, for some reason, the TIFF guys decided that, okay, we want to support both little and big Indian byte words. You can choose. It really doesn't do any good. It just makes it harder to implement a decoder. And it does have a lot of optional fields, which is mentioned in TIC 6 extensions. And this is where things are getting more complicated, but this is what a lot of people are using. You have the fax compressions that I talked about earlier, um, the T4 and T6. Mostly only used in faxes, but um, there are a lot of faxes out there that are still in use and create those uh, images. You have the LZW or Lempulsive Welsh compression, which is the same one used in GIF that was um, licensed until some years ago. It's now open and a lot in use in TIFF. And also you have two different JPEG-based compressions in TIFF. One is an old specification that doesn't really work, but still a lot of images use that. And the new one. Um, yeah. SMIC files, all those extras, and um, take over. Yeah. So we have this problem, we have those many TIFF image formats, and now we have my production code and I need to process all possible TIFF images, or most possible TIFF images. So what I did in the end, and you don't like it, I was mixing and matching libraries. So I'm using the 12Monkey stuff, and if 12Monkey doesn't work, I'm falling back to Apache Commons Imaging, and if, does, if this does not work, I could fall back to Java Advanced Imaging, just to make sure that I can handle as many TIFF images as possible. So it's basically glue code with fallback mechanisms and it's ugly and error prone. But it saves my day. So, next puzzle. What's wrong here? I know that's not beautiful. But why can I look at a PDF, an Acrobat viewer, and extract that image? I mean, it's a PDF document. It contains images. What's so difficult about it, again? Whoops. a layering problem. That's exactly the image. Uh, that's exactly the image I extract as binary stream. But if I try to process it as JPEG, it's broken. No, it's not a compression. No, it's not too high resolution. No, it's not blurred and not inverted. It looks fine, yeah. But why can't I process it? Okay, so. Welcome to GPIC 2. GPIC 2 is, yeah, that's a new compression uh, file format, doing very good compression of B tonal, B level images. And you've never heard about it. Same here. Uh, the interesting thing is, it was added to the PDF standard in 2004. That means, since 2004, most PDF viewers can actually display those images. The problem is that there are some patents on top of it, so it's protected. So it's not entirely easy to re-implement or reinvent the compression algorithm. Yeah, and what happens is the following. PDF extracts the image, looks at the image and says, hmm, okay, image processing is done, remember ImageIO. So it goes to ImageIO and yeah, it says GPIC2 filter. Oh, ImageIO has no support for GPIC2. So it says can't find an ImageIO plugin doing that. So it tells me something went wrong. So it's an error line in my log file and then it tries to pass it as JPEG image. That means it's a perfect combination. I got all those error messages in the log file, but I get a broken image as a result of the processing. So I probably have to patch PDF box actually to throw an exception if it's unable to process or convert an image. 
So, anyone asleep? Because it would now be a perfect time to wake up, because we talk about the things to take home for this presentation. Um, if you do image processing and PDF processing in a large scale environment, you won't process all possible documents. Be sure about that. You can, you can hmm? yeah. uh, just say some fancy numbers like 99.99%. I mean, it's still one out of 10,000 images being broken, yeah? But never say, we can process all PDF and images. It won't work. It's really painful. One thing when I talk with customers, the saying, ah, you should process millions of images is, uh, can I have that one million of test images, please? They usually say, no, we don't have them. That's fine. So what I do is I agree on a large subset of their images and say, okay, if I can process that, my work is done. Everything else is changed first. So that's a rather good idea. And well, if you're getting those change requests that you can process dot that particular one out of one million images, you have to hit the learning curve. And one thing that's really important, never mention TIFF. No, there no, sorry, you never should say TIFF, yeah? It's just a baseline TIFF. Never write TIFF. Always write baseline TIFF. Never talk to a customer saying, we are processing TIFF files. No, no, you're processing baseline TIFF files. Your customer find out that baseline TIFF is not a lot, but yeah, it's better good to be sorry here and to expand the scope to baseline TIFF plus those TIFF 6.0 extension to something. But never say TIFF, never mention TIFF, never write TIFF. Um, yeah, I think 12 Monkeys is an excellent library. So when I looked first at your source code at GitHub, I was really impressed. It's solid stuff, lots of Maven build stuff there. And my personal opinion is I grabbed it, I integrated it. Uh, I don't want to say that one day or two days before going live and they did not notice. So it's good stuff. Uh, it comes with a lot of support, so most of your image processing can be done with 12 monkeys alone, like scaling, color conversion, cropping, or watermarking. And for me, the really important thing is it has real-world JPEG support. So most of the images which can't be processed by ImageIO out of the box can be done with 12 monkeys library, which is, which is a huge saver for me. Again, if you look into more specialized image formats like TIFF and JPEG 2000. You can revert to Chai, Java Advanced Imaging, or Apache Imaging. And if you do really serious image rescaling, check out one of those dedicated libraries. So if you're still interested in this topic, here are two links. Uh, I have a GitHub project. It's the Java Image Processing Survival Guide, which contains the presentation which contains a paper containing a lot more information than I presented here. And more important, it contains sample code ready to use with the Maven project. So you could check it out and run the test. Because one of the things which really annoyed me is like, there is a problem, you can solve it that way. You don't have the sample image and you don't have the real solution. So that's the reason why I wrote a lot of sample code basically to illustrate all my problems to him. Okay, and of course, check out the 12 Monkeys libraries on GitHub. And now it's time for the first question. Okay, we I see two hands. I start with I st yeah, I start. Nobody is perfect. The question was, I mean, how comes that the Java world is having problems with stupid image processing? If you are using image magic for ages without problems. That's the whole thing. Image magic is a very mature software. So it handles a lot of the issues I already mentioned. And the other problem is that 
there are not a lot of changes in the image I.O. There are a lot of open bugs which are still open, not fixed. And the Chai project is actually dead. So I agree with you. Image magic in this particular area is superior. That's my opinion. But it's just, yeah, it's, a take, it's something taking and giving. Image magic is very powerful, but I either have to start an external process in Java, or I'm going to use the GNI interface for that. And both ways actually have problems. So I think yeah, your comment is right, yeah? I think you're completely right. I should not be standing here in front of you and telling about the issues I have with Java image processing. But that's the whole point. I had these problems, and that's the reason why I'm standing here and telling you it's a little bit more complicated than it should be. But you're right. The question is, if you would migrate a PHP application to Java, wait? No, you don't have to wait. I mean, one thing you have to, you have to uh, ask yourself, how many images from how many sources are you processing? The problem is you can process millions and billions of images from one source. If that works for one image, it works for all the other images. But the problem comes with those user uploaded images. Wilhaben has, I think, two million users, and those two million users have Many, many, many different cameras and image processing software and old images and downloaded images, whatever. And that's the problem. If you have many, many sources of your uploaded images, then it starts tricky. If you have one, two, or three image sources and all the images look the same, then it's easy. So Java is not that bad, but what I'm handling here is the fact that I have two million users out there, plus another project with a couple of thousand users out there doing all those image scan from fax and well, ugly stuff. Okay, I hope I answered your question. The next one, please. Yeah, so uh, I have a similar problem. Uh, Pedro, uh, actually, two years ago, uh, Pedro was uh, working on the The question was, this man over there had similar problems one or two years ago, and do we have integration tests to make sure that our solution works now and in the future? Well, um, for my GitHub stuff, you have integration tests? I mean, integration tests, me yeah, there are integration tests, yeah? I, I pick up the source images, I create the target images. If I get really an exception out of somewhere, I would catch that, but some things you have to check manually. Let's say uh, if you're processing a very strange TIFF or JPEG format and you mess up the target image, that is something you have to inspect manually. Yes, I have those integration tests. They're quite good, but they won't cover all problems. So that's the reason why for every test I write, I generate an output file. So you find all the output files and the target out and then the test case name. So you can inspect them manually. image with uh, known good image byte by byte. No, I'm not having that level. Because for me, this, this GitHub project is a way to play around. I encounter a problem, so it gives me the possibility to test this problem in isolation, because in a real project you have too many libraries interacting with each other. So I need something simple, yeah? something like I have those 10 lines and they can reproduce my problem. And then I can contact him saying, something wrong with my 10 lines, and says, no, 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 it's not wrong, it's something else, whatever. And it gives me basically, yeah, the possibility to play around and document my issues, and that's the reason why I wrote all this, all this cool stuff. Any other questions out there, Dominic? So, if image magic is so much more major than this whole Java stuff combined, what were the problems of spawning the external process? I mean, and if you would uh, resist in doing GDI binding, Yeah, I know Apache Commons exit. 
Okay, the question was, well, if, it's, if image magic is really that good, why not use an external process using Apache Commons exec to do it? A couple of reasons in my personal opinion. First is, image magic changes, so it's not always backward compatible. Uh, launching an external process can be a little bit tricky. You just launch it, it's doing something. What happens if it gets stuck? It's not coming back for some reason. But it's still consuming the memory. So you need basically a cleanup process to kill this process again if it's, if it's getting stuck. I mean, that's part of Commons exec. Uh, it's a little bit tricky sometimes if you start it on different platforms. Think Windows and Mac OS. Um, what happens if you really process a lot of images in parallel? You're spawning a lot of external processes which could bring down your server. It has, so final answer is yes, it's possible. It has advantages, it has disadvantages, but for that particular project we opted for, we would like to have that simple integration, just a jar file, no external tinkering with processes, no GNI, no GNI, whatever. But after the project, I would say, well, it wouldn't be a bad idea, yeah? It's perfectly possible and do it, doing uh, doable. You have support for the starting those external processes. But still, the message is, it can be tricky, yeah? You have those Java image processing problems. On the other hand, you have those external process problems sometimes. Okay. Very last question for today, because you might have, you might like to switch the room. If not, I would like to say thank you, and yeah, see you next year.